Okay, so hello everyone, and a special hello to Keith, enjoying the weather in Spain. So hello, Keith. Um, now today is the 1st of October, and I'm David Stanley, and this is the seventh week, third year of the spiritual journey. And a big hello to America and David Vice, who is not a member of the McLeod clan. clan. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I heard you talk about Dennis. Yes. Um, in fact, he's, he's a, a unicorn magically working on the flat earth theory reality. Yes. <laughs> okay. As an introduction, yes, as an introduction, I'd like to also introduce and plug my book, yes, now here it is, um, Olympic Fever. Now, this, this is a children's book. It's, it's about um, animals on the farm, yes, animals on the farm who engage in a race. Now, it's not a flat earth book, but surprisingly, um, it was written in 2012 when the, um, the flat earth movement, let's say, started to surge and grow, yes, 2012, um, and, well, um, Quite surprisingly, yes, it's, I mean, up here you can see there's a crow, yes. Um, now, it's called Olympic Fever, and as you might know, Greece, ancient Greece, was considered or considered the world to be flat earth, yes. That's the story they um, tell us. That's the story they tell us. Now... Okay, so we, we have Crow up here, and we have, well, this reminds me that you can't always stay deep in the rabbit hole. Yes, you have to come up to breathe spiritually sometime or another. Yes? Good advice. Um, yeah? So, in the book, you will find encoded, yes? Yes. Encoded. Um, Crow Triple Seven. Now, Crow Triple Seven, I learned from this man, David Weiss, is a very special radio program or po podcast. And I've looked into some of his work. And what he says, I, I, I looked at um, one of his, his uh, videos from... 2019 and that's when the, the spiritual journey i put that online yes um, i've actually got 40 years experience in this um but that's another story so um he he said he said that we should we should look at science through the lens of natural elemental um history Yes, or natural elemental research. And that is exactly what the uh, spiritual journey does. Yes, it's about elementals. Yes, and this story, yes, is a fairy story. Yes, but it's, it's, uh, it's a good fairy story rather than uh, the fairy story that we're getting at the moment. Yes. Um, so that's the plug on my book. Um, so basically, like I said, this is this is um, this is week seven, and I was talking to a troll. Yes, because um, I'm now getting a lot of trolls. Yes, I was talking to a troll, and I told him, why doesn't he make seven? Globe Earth videos, you know, if, if, if he believes in it so much, why doesn't he make seven Globe Earth videos? And of course, that reflects on me, and I thought, well, 
that means I've got to make seven flat earth videos. Yes, which is what I'm doing. And this is the seventh one. And so very special because we've got the top man. Yes. Or one of the top men, let's most, say. Most outspoken, we'll say. The magical unicorn. Um, that's, <laughs> that's what, you know, that's, that's, no, that's no comic um, announcement. But um, I, would, I would say that you are one of the, the most informed people about flat earth on this flat plane. Let me let me correct you there. I'm not the most informed. I'm the most outspoken. I'm the one that does it the most. There are plenty of people that know far more than me. It's a combination of work. We all share information. I just happen to be the spokesman, right? I've made myself the spokesman. I'm not officially the spokesman. I'm just the guy out there talking to everybody, passing the information to new ears. So you may think, oh, I'm the top guy. I'm the guy with the biggest mouth. That's it. Right. Right. And, and well, the biggest um, research, one of the biggest researches, anyway. Um, you, you, you are a, a, a flat Earth scientist. A we flat like Earth science. natural scientist. Flat Earthers yeah. love science. We don't like scientism because saying the word science or doing math. That's not science, right? We like actually testing, testable, repeatable, observable, measurable, touchable experiments. And all of them show us that the earth is stationary and a level field, hills and valleys, ups and downs, but we're on a level plane. Yes, your, your video, um, the sunset that fades out, caught me, yes? Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Then, and, and since then, I've been filming sunsets galore. Yes. And, and so a, qu a, quick, a quick question about sunsets. Why sure. do we get red sunsets sometimes? Any idea? Well, it, it's the frequency of the light and the amount of atmosphere that it's going through and the gases that it's uh, exciting. But think about this. When the sun's over your head, it's kind of white and bright and it's not red. But then when it goes away, it's red. The whole sky like turns red when it's on the horizon. But think about somebody that is over there underneath the sun. Are they looking up and seeing a red sky? No, they're seeing a different frequency because the light is closer to them. There's people that have actually filmed the sun when it's out of sight. It's dark, but they use different wavelength cameras to see the sun, it's still there, but it's visible light can't reach our eyes. Our eyes see this much of the spectrum, which is, you know, way bigger than that. We can only see that little sliver. So as the sun moves away, its frequencies, you know, when it's really right next to us, it's bright, it's white. And you move it away, it, those whites go away. We have the reds and then it just fades away, as you saw in this video, into the thickness of the atmosphere. Yeah, I, I was I was I was completely blown away with the, your whole the whole idea that you have about the atmospheric deck of opacity. It's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the perfect name, and I'm copywriting it. But anyone can use it. It's not copyrighted. I coined it. Um, but the trolls will look at this video and go, "Oh, use a solar filter." If I put a solar filter on, you wouldn't even see the sun. Okay, so they're, what they're saying is, put a blindfold on so you can't see what's happening. The other thing they say is, it's out of focus. Guess what? It might be a little out of focus. It might be a little bit. It's hard to focus on something that far away, that small, that's not even physical. But it doesn't matter. It's the downward progress. In five minutes, it was going down, 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 down. If the earth was spinning, it wouldn't slow down. But it did. It went down, 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 down. And it stopped. And it sat here for 10 minutes. It sat here and it just faded into the soup of the atmosphere. And I'm going to make a better video of this, but um, let me show you how that works. I think that we see everything in our personal atmospheric dome. When you see the sun appear on the horizon, I think it's less than 100 miles away. But let's just say it's 100, right? That means when you see it set on the other horizon, it's only traveled 200 miles during the day. Do you know why the sun 
appears to move really slow across the sky when we're moving at all these ridiculous speeds? The answer is because it is moving slow. The sun that we see is moving very slow. Here's a glass dome, and I'm moving a light just across, straight across above it, and it looks better in person. You get a glass dome, you can use this as a paperweight on Amazon, whatever, and get a light, and you hold the light above it, and you'll see like a brown ball sun inside. It's like projecting into the middle, not onto the bottom, a sun. So here, here I come, I'm approaching, it appeared on the horizon, it rises, right? Your point of view is from the center of this dome. And then as it goes away, it goes down, 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 and then it stops. And it just fades away. It never goes below. It's just going out of range. And that's how we see the sun rise and the sun set. Okay. What caught me about the sunset is that every day, the sun makes another circle on its circuit around the flat plane. And every day it moves, depending on, on the season, one sort of degree or something to the left or to the right. Oh, I've lost you, Dave. <laughs> no, I'm here. Can you see? Uh, I shared a, a screen. Can you see my share screen? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, while you're talking, I was going to illustrate what you're saying. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like I said, what caught me um, is that when when the 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 sun circles the tropic of Cancer, um, that circle is only something like twenty two um, thousand miles long. Uh, I think it is it. You know what? I don't. I don't really know the circumference of it. You know, the supposed circumference of the equator is twenty four thousand. So yes, the Tropic of Cancer would be smaller. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I looked it up on Google, and okay. it said it was something like twenty two. Well, then it must be true. And, and that, that that brings me to the question: How large is the circumference of the Tropic of Capricorn? Yeah, well, yeah. it should it should be bigger on a flat Earth, and it should be the same size as the Tropic of Cancer, but it's not. It, it, it's it's not at all. And um, you know, the, one of the things that the trolls will say is, "Well, who? Well, how does the sun speed up if it goes around that Tropic of Cancer? I mean, the Tropic of Capricorn in December, it has to go much faster." Well, I think it does go faster. I think uh, the way we look at it is. The sun, if if the sun that we see is the projected sun, this is my opinion. This is how I think it works. So get a flashlight, point it um, three feet on the floor. So the beam is three feet on the floor in front of you and then spin around once and it take a full minute to spin around. And you just drew a circle with a diameter of three feet. Okay. With a, uh, a diameter of six feet. Sorry. Good. Three and three. Right. Now, just point it a little farther out. Just change the projection angle so it's six feet away from you and spin around at the same rotation, one spin per minute. Well, you just did a circle. The sun just made a circle that's 12 feet in diameter in the same amount of time. And the actual sun only changed its focal point. That's it. So that, you know, and again, Looking up at the sky to at your ceiling to figure out the shape of the floor is ridiculous. Like if I wanted to confirm that my floor is flat, I don't look up at the lights in the ceiling and try to measure them and figure out the shape of them. I look at the floor and I actually measure it. The optics yeah. well, in the well, sky I, are are a, a of, Go ahead. A lot of people have have um, light bulbs now which are coil shaped, which would be more flat Earth stuff. <laughs> well, those coil shaped bulbs are really bad. You shouldn't have those. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. Like I say, one of the amazing things that caught me was um, that it moves from the Tropic of Cancer to the equator and it, in about 90 circles. Yeah. Yes. Now, I, now I've, I've filmed as many sunsets as possible um, since June. 21st yeah to september the 21st and and beyond 
um, to, to, to see what the sun is actually doing and some rises. Um, in fact, I've been, I've been filming the sun and seasons for about two years. Yes. So, so it was kind of much easier for me to, um, in May this year, to, to look at the Flat Earth videos and have a eureka moment after three days. The Earth is a flat plane, electromagnetic biodome. 100%. So here, here's the thing. Uh, people say, well, how can you, the sun doesn't look like it's going faster. Well, that's because people in the south, people in the north, we all see our sun on our at personal atmospheric dome of vision. That's what I call it. And so in the south, you're seeing the same thing, but the sun is going faster. So when it gets down to that point where that light hits the bottom of the dome where I showed you on that glass dome, it's moving away faster. So here I'm in the northeast in the United States. I live in the Arctic region inside of the Tropic of Cancer. When the sun sets in June, it's still light for another two hours. Okay? So now at an equal latitude south, so you would be south of the Tropic of Capricorn, right? Yeah. Um, at equal latitude south, places like South Africa, six months later in December, when the sun sets there, it should be light for another two hours. But it's not. Five minutes after sunset, it's pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Five minutes. How is that possible on a globe? The answer is it's impossible. Right. Okay. Well, what I worked out, because I was trying to work out the speed that the sun takes and how it changes, is I worked out from the equator being um, a circle of um, 1,864 miles roughly, um, I worked out that the, the, the speed of the sun to get around that um, circle in 24 hours would be 1,048 miles an hour. That's about right. Right. So, so therefore, from that, if you know that the, the size of the circumference of the uh, Tropic of Cancer, you can work out the speed. And if you know the size of the Tropic of um, Capricorn, you can work out the speed. Yeah, but you don't know the sizes of them. Now, you can, you know, with because there's a lot of land in the north and flights and times, you can kind of figure out the Tropic of Cancer. But the Tropic of Capricorn is a whole, a whole nother thing. So the trolls, again, will come out with flights, you know, like, hey, when you go from... Yeah. On a, but but, but would, wouldn't it be possible to calculate it? By looking at the um, Gleason, uh, yeah, you can, and and I Gleason believe that map. the Gleason, the Gleason's map is the most accurate map that we have. The problem is they'll tell you, hey, when a flight goes from Santiago to um, to Australia, the you couldn't make it; it's too far because on a flat Earth, it's really far apart. But what's funny is these are both southern locations. You should be able to get to them, you know, Santiago to. Australia to Perth, right across the bottom of the ball, you know, maybe just go around Antarctica if you don't want to fly and disturb the penguins. Okay. So that's where you go, but they don't do that. They go all the way up into the Northern hemisphere across and down many Southern flights to distant Southern locations, all travel across the equator to the North. Never, ever do two Northern uh, de location, you know, de um, origins and destinations ever cross the equator ever. So let's just look at a couple of flight routes besides this, right? This is ridiculous. This only makes sense on a flat earth where it's pretty much a straight line. Okay. Well, I've had, I had somebody tell me that, that they took a flight or something similar to that straight across to Australia. Yeah. Well, so that we did. So here's one, uh, Max Egan, who uh, was a very anti flat earth. Now he knows that there's a lie and he's onto other things. So, um, he said, hey, I'm taking this direct flight because a lot of flat earthers didn't even believe the flight existed because it is uh, fairly new. I'm not sure when it started. Maybe it was five years ago, or maybe a little longer. Um, 
there was no direct flight, but then all of a sudden they came out with a new airplane that only a certain couple, like a small handful of military pilots could fly. The plane, we did research on it. Can't find the research anymore. It has seven layers of heat resistant paint. Hmm. Why does this plane need seven layers of heat resistant paint? Maybe it's going a little faster than planes since the 1960s and 70s, right? What's so crazy about that idea? The other thing is it flies at like 40, 45,000 feet where there's two to 300 mile an hour circular winds that they can take advantage of. The plane only needs to go maybe 600, 650 miles an hour, catch a 200 mile an hour tailwind, and these, these destination times make perfect sense. But here's the thing. Max did it from Santiago, head him back to Perth, and you should be going south, southwest, you know, and then a little, um, and then, you know, a little more west, and then you should be going to Australia. But that's not what happened. He took compass readings, and he had readings of um, northwest, then west, and then southwest, and then south. And we plotted them out on a flat earth map. His compass readings show this route. Well, this is the exact route that they take, right? And you can only go west for a split second. West is not a straight line. You can't point west. When you point west, you're pointing south. When you point east, you're pointing south. When you point south, you're pointing south. And when you point north, you are pointing north. But if you keep going north, you'll be going south. All straight lines are south. Okay. Well, for, for, for people that wish to, to learn more about these very elementary things, I suggest they go to your, your site, um, deep, in, uh, deep inside the rabbit hole. Uh, that uh, Actually, my, my site is out. the Flat Earth Podcast. You can just find it at Flat Earth Dave. But the best place to learn about Flat Earth is my app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Um, it bypasses YouTube's algorithms. It delivers you featured videos every day. It has all of your questions answered in video format. It has tons of resources and it'll help you locate other flat earthers near you. I wish I could get it. I tried to get it. It, it won't fit on my phone. My phone isn't big enough. It won't fit on my laptop. I cannot download it's not it. A, it's not a so laptop. I stick to your one. Yeah, it's not a laptop. Yeah. Uh, it's only for so, mobile phones and, and uh, iPads and uh, tablets. You need. Um, well, I, I feel like you're you're, you're going to change the configuration so it fits on a laptop. Eventually, well. eventually, we're going to do that. You can you can access the the actual map the um the map that shows you where all the flat earthers are, and uh, that's kind of fun. But the the app itself will you know deliver you the content and answer the questions and give you you know access to all the photos and, and everything else. Um, what if you have an Android phone? You need operating system 8.0 or higher. Yeah, my, my, mine's, mine's very small. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, a Huawei. Yeah. So, so right. on the app every day, there's a featured video. When I tell people is if you think Flat Earth is stupid, challenge me. I give you three Bitcoins for one globe proof. But before, before you do it, you got to watch the video every day for two weeks. Then you have to hit the frequently asked questions button and up comes almost every question you're going to ask. I haven't seen any new ones, but they're here. And if it's not answered there, uh, send it to me. I'll answer it. Uh, tons of resources, tons of books, um, tons of all, all sorts of stuff. But the, the people that say there's no such thing as flat earthers, here's some flat earthers. Okay. They're everywhere. Where, where are you located? I'm located in South Sea. In South Sea? Where, where is that? That's, well, you love the sea, don't you? That's what, con the, what, what country that's are you? That's near the Isle of Wight. You know the Isle of Wight? Is that, what country is that? Well, that, that's at the bottom of England. United Kingdom. Yeah. So, United Kingdom. So, here you go. We got some flat earthers in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, it, it looks it looks like you've got some flat earthers on the Isle of Wight too. I believe yeah. so, and, and some in, and some around um, Hampshire. 
Yeah. Right. They're they're so, they're everywhere, and you could also tap on a dot and send a you can send a text message to somebody if you want to contact them and and get together. Yeah. Good it, stuff. It, it looks very good. Can, can I suggest an improvement for your app? Go for it. Maybe. Got? Um, okay. Now, I'd like to know when the sun is passing closest to the the, the city I'm in. Can I find that out? You mean when it's closest during the year or the day? Yeah, yeah. You're, you know, within sort of six days, when when is it the closest to to where I am? Well, I'll give you that answer right now. It's if you're inside the Tropic of Cancer, it's closest to you right around June twenty first at noon. Yeah. Be- because I wondered when it would pass over, you know, the time. What what time of day it would pass it'll over. only pass over you if you're uh, between the two tropics, the Tropic of Cancer yeah. and the Tropic of yeah, Capricorn. Yeah. I know that 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 was that was the suggestion that you could actually um, have a link to 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 the city that it's over at any one point uh, any time. I'll look into yeah. it. Yeah. Now I've lost you again. I'm here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, it's, it's, uh, YouTube, they're like that. Um, yes. So on with what I want to talk about today, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, I, um, for, for, for the seventh week of the spiritual journey, I'd like to continue with the theme of the background history, um, to, to the flat earth. Yes. And um, how they created the, the spherical Earth. Now, I would like, if I say to you, um, the Spanish Inquisition, yes, what happened during that, that period? Yes, that, that was um, introducing the spherical Earth. You know, I don't know if any of that is true. I interviewed. A 102-year-old woman back in February of 2020 uh, who told us that she was taught the earth was flat in uh, public school here in America. And we found other people all across the earth that uh, claim the same thing even at later dates. So this globe deception is less than 100 years old, in my opinion, evidence to back it up. And the whole story about Aristophanes finding out 2,000 years ago, Spanish Inquisition, I wasn't there. Couldn't tell you. I don't believe anything before 1900. I don't believe anything okay. at all. Okay. Well, what I'm talking about is in the same period as the Spanish Inquisition, which created a lot of fear worldwide, Copernicus introduced the heliocentric model. Did you meet him? Did you, did you meet him personally? Do you know that he was a real person? Very good. That's a good point. And the second point is that supposedly Isaac Newton had the theory theory of gravity. Ridiculous story. An apple falling on the ground and he figured out gravity. Dumbest story ever. Okay. Made up story. Not true. Not even sure if Isaac Newton was a real person. Okay, so these are things you're telling stories that storytellers have told you. The people you learn that from the people that are controlling us. You learn that from the Rockefeller textbooks. Okay, they're only giving us the information they want us to believe. They're not showing us, you know, what happened at the World's Fairs. They're not showing us the true history, the true technology, the advanced civilization that was here in the 1800s. They want us to believe it was the Wild West here in America. Nonsense. Are you trying to tell me that the victors um, dictate the narrative? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I think we all know that one. What, what, what about Le Maitre? Yes? I don't know what that um, is. The, what, what's Le Maitre? Le, Le Maitre, a, I think his name was Pierre Le Maitre. He, um, he was... Uh, Working for the church, Catholic church, or, or the the same Catholic. church where a priest came up with the idea of 
the globe. I think a priest came up with the whole heliocentric system. It's that, all that, the Big Bang. The Big Bang. He, oh, came, he came up with the Big Bang, right? He wasn't even a scientist. He came up with the Big Bang. Yeah, and that's that's, awesome. that's science. You know, that's, that's, that's the matrix. Science. Well, well, the interesting thing about Lemaitre is he was an officer in the First World War, and um, he he was an artillery officer, so he would obviously watch a lot of explosions. Yes, mm. and so after, and he was an astrologer, I believe, uh, um, in astronomy, and he 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 came up with the idea that creation exploded into existence yeah cool, so, cool, so that's cool story that, it, it was have you got any sunglasses cool story bro <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay well yes that that's really what i wanted to talk about is the spanish inquisition yeah because during that period there was a lot of fear and as far as i know um the agenda started way back, yes, um, a thousand years ago, even. Really? Do you, yeah. do, do you have any, any video proof of that? Do you know anybody from that time? I, here's the thing. Anything above as far as we can reach, we can't, it's speculation. Anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, unless you have special access, you can't confirm any of it. And anything before 1900 is a story. OK, most likely a fake story. You look at the buildings around the world. They told us were built in the 16, 17, 1800s when they had horses and buggies. We couldn't build those buildings today. Right. So all of our history, this world was so different that even us truth seekers have a hard time imagining what it actually was. So it's all nonsense, all of it. So if you're a history major, you have wasted all your money. If you're an astronomy major, you are a, basically studying cartoons, okay? It's, a, it's well, amazing. Hang, hang on. I, I, I studied history in school, and my, my, my thoughts about it was, this is pointless. It, not only is it pointless, it's made up. His <laughs> story. It's the Rockefeller story. It's a nonsense. It's all absolute nonsense. I don't know if you follow John Levy. Great. Uh, if you want to, if you haven't looked into Tatari, you probably have. But anybody listening, J O N space Levi, L E V I, YouTube does 20 minute videos. Start watching those and your head will explode. I can imagine. Yeah. They're, 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 um, I'm, I'm finding the Crow 777 video very good. Crow 777radio.com. Best podcast ever. And I, I see that you got the rabbit from deep inside the rabbit hole in there too. So there's Crow and me on your book from 2012, yeah. 2012, right? That's right. Uh, that, and now here we are talking. Just okay. for those of you that well, don't know about Crow Triple Seven Radio, subscribe, download all 350 of his past episodes or however many there are, and listen to them. It's better than any college education. It costs you five dollars a month. Okay. Well. Do just let me say about this book that it's bilingual. It's written in, in English at the top and or French. I can't see. I need my glasses. Yeah. English at the top and French at the bottom. Every page has got a design. Yes. Here we nice. go. He's off to his he's off to his rabbit hole. Actually yeah. he's going to a party. Yeah. Um so that's my book. Yes. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope this could be the new flat earth book. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, I got to, maybe, maybe it could be, I, I got to read it. Well, it's, it's on Ex Libris. Okay. Yes. You go to the bookstore for Ex Libris and uh, you look up Olympic fever and you go straight to it. All right. Yeah, and it comes in, in three three types. Um, hardback. Uh, well, supra or um, paperback, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah. And 
There's also an ebook. So very good. So you got the three types. But the thing is that this is this book is like I say bilingual. I'm actually trilingual. Um, just let me ask you, um, Dave. Do you have a degree? I have a degree in life. I also have a bull BS bullshit degree from college where I was indoctrinated to believe a bunch of nonsense. I'm a success. Listen, you, you have to believe that, you know, they want you to believe if you want to make money in this world, you got to go to college and become part of the corporate system. Well, I went to college. I became part of corporate America. I left corporate America. I started my own company. I was the CEO of my own company, making tons of money. I had everything. I got it all. I walked away from it all, right? Because I realized it's all nonsense. And we're in a, the world right now is in a situation where if we don't wake up and get our heads out of our asses, uh, we're going to be in for a thousand years of slavery. I have a very similar story to you. Yes. I was uh, on paper, you could say, I was heading towards being a, a millionaire. I was, um, C well, you call it a CEO. I was chairman of a new company. And at that moment, when everything seems to be going well, I looked at it and, and I asked myself if that was what I wanted out of life. And I, I said to myself, no, this isn't what I want. What I want is the spiritual adventure. Yes. Yeah, that's, I want my right life there, very to be similar. spiritual. Yeah. Yes. And that is what I said. And I said, I, I lit a match and I said, well, I can burn all these papers. Um, unfortunately, the, the match went out, but symbolically, I burned everything, yes, and I walked away from it, really, and became a uh, English language teacher for foreigners. There you go. That's good. I'm a bilingual illiterate. I can't read or write in two different languages. Yeah. Well, I, uh, the college says I can speak three languages, so... Um, but I, I, I have a very strong, uh, what we call a bullshit ometer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. for reading bullshit that comes up your way. It's amazing. You know, you go out, go like, if you go to, um, a good bookstore, I don't say good bookstore or one, you know, even a Costco in their book section, You'll find these books on space and planets and space travel, and they're hardcover, they're glossy, they're amazing paper, beautifully done, beautifully designed, incredible illustrations, right? And I was in the printing business for 20 years. I was in the commercial printing business, so I know how much these things cost. This book should sell for $100, but it's cost $5.99, right? Amazing book. Well, you can't ship it. You can't box it and ship it for that cost, you know, you know, almost. But they've designed it, they've printed it, they've bind it, they've shipped it, you know, and they get it to Costco and Costco is selling it for $5.99. Why is that? Because they're in, it's indoctrination. It's indoctrination. What do you got there? Well, my book's got wonderful illustrations as well. That's that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, well, they're, they're, I mean, they're showing us planets and stuff. And you know, people think that these are photos, but they're illustrations. So, again, it, it's the same thing they do for schools. You know, schools are purposely underfunded, right? They have to have a bake sale to buy supplies. When the military, they get, you know, millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. NASA, $64 million every single day. But books... You know, schools are just way underfunded. And so when the textbooks come out, the Rockefellers offer, hey, we got these textbooks. You can have them for, you know, $4 a piece, right? Meanwhile, they cost $30 a piece to make or whatever. So therefore, anybody that comes up with an alternative textbook they want to sell to schools can't do it. Even if, you know, if someone comes up with a textbook and say, you know what, I can make this for $20 and I'll sell it for free and I won't even charge them for shipping. The schools go like, no, no, we can get that for 4 and that's how they control the information. You can't even, no one can afford to give better information for less money. Now, that's kind of changing with the internet and stuff because people can get access to stuff, but schools are required to follow these curriculums and teach these kids this nonsense. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, going on from that, you you see you see here that there's a star. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually a, a, a nine-pointed star. Yeah. Um, so I get to play with three triangles. Um, but that star, um, there, there's a story that goes with that. And you're talking about indoctrination for, for children. Well, down, down on the seafront, that there was a, um, a party for a, a young chap who was uh, one year old. Yes. And they decorated the whole tree with, with um, different things like stars and ribbons and planets. And they had this great big suit um, statue of a man dressed in a NASA suit. And that was for, for that was for the the birthday party. And I I said I, I went up straight away to 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 the organizer, and I said, you know, do you know what NASA stands for? Yes, um, which which I mentioned. If you put an S, um, no, a T for tongue in the middle, you can work out what the anagram is. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that was for, for this young lad's uh, first birthday. Yeah. I, I managed to recuperate one, one star. They, uh, they, you know, NASA is pushed on us before kids, before they can even talk. I mean, look at the children's show, Sesame Street had astronauts on. Walt Disney had astronauts on, had Werner von Braun, right? The, the supposed Nazi scientist from, um, you know, from the Nazis that came over to run NASA. That's the story they tell us. Yeah, yeah probably the paper clip. Don't believe it. I believe he is an actor on the world stage. There was no space race. There was none of this. It's all nonsense. Well, I'm glad you say that. Now, coming back to my book and coming back to Crow, yes, a funny thing happened to me now yesterday when I was walking. I, I, I just finished my morning exercises which I do occasionally, yes? And I was walking across the field and suddenly I saw these great big black wings and these claws and this crow came down behind me and touched me on the neck. And I, I thought it was somebody pushing me, but I could see the wings and everything behind me, yes? And I thought, whoa, is that a sign? Interesting. Yeah, that, that, that's the first time that, ever happened to me I, I, I don't know I don't know it, it's unusual to be touched by a crow that is unusual crows are very smart yeah yeah that's uh, that's basically is, is there is, is there something else you want to say David I mean, there, we can go over. I mean, you already know the earth is flat. I don't know about your listeners. Um, one thing I didn't cover before is when I was talking about the southern plane flights, you know, from like Santiago to Perth, it goes into the north. Why don't planes cross the southern, um, you know, cross the equator when they're going from locations in the north? Here's a southern location. Why doesn't it stop in Africa? Why does it go all the way up here? And the answer is because on a flat earth, you have to cross the equator, which is right about here, cross the equator to go. This is the straightest line. You look at this one, right? Emergency landing in Seattle. Why is that? Uh, that's because Seattle's right there. But again, pretty much a northern location to a northern location doesn't cross the equator. Another one. Dallas to Beijing, emergency landing in Calgary. Far, far, far out of the way, Calgary's right on the straight line. Again, in the north, it's always a straight line, right? You want to go from Santiago to Western Australia, you got to cross the entire north, right? So the, these, these flight routes 100% prove that we live on a flat earth. Again, emergency stop in Moscow, which is up here. Moscow's right on the straight line. Tons of emergency landings that happen. Uh, there's 16 of them in this book. You can get it free online as a PDF or lulu.com or it's in the app. Um, and it's a great uh, coffee I, table. I book. Use Lulu. Yeah, I, I use Lulu as well. Yeah. Um, 
Olympic fever is on Lulu as well. Yeah, yeah, good, good stuff. Work. And I highly recommend people get these books because who knows how long stuff is going to remain online in their cloud system. Yeah. I, okay. So, David, could you tell us a bit about your history? But I, I just want one specific thing from you. Yeah. Can you tell tell us how your first date went? My first day on Earth? No, your first date. My first date. Yeah, with with a with a girl. Yeah. How, my how about my first date with the girl that I'm with now? Well, if you insist. No, I don't. Have, I mean, I don't insist on anything. So my first date, I don't know, awkward, nervous, klutzy, dope. I don't know. I was, you know, I was a complete, I was a, a, a dweeb. How's that? That, that? Now you figure out how it went. <laughs> oh, so, so, so it went great because you, you married the, the Well, the that's lady. not the, well, the one I'm with now, I would, I would say it almost went the same as my first date, but it, you know, it turned out good in the end. <laughs> great. Actually, I was very, I, 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 I was very smooth, if you must know. Um, my my first day, you see, my first date was uh, went. I thought went pretty well because I followed the the, the girl home, and uh, she didn't see me. But she called the well, cops. I thought, she did, <laughs> I, I, I thought she didn't see me. Yes. Yeah. But um, a short time later, I received a letter from her. You know, how she got my address and everything, I don't know. Um, and she just told me how much she was in love with me and everything. Um, and and so she invited me around to her place. And I thought, well, this is it. You know, this is love. And so I gave her a big kiss on, on, on the mouth. That was my big mistake. Yeah, she, she, she just slapped me so hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could only happen on a flat earth, by the way, because if you're on a ball earth, we'd all be dead. So there you go. That's another proof of flat earth. <laughs> yeah. 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 It sucks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything Any other else? questions you want to you want to wrap it up or you got more? Oh, Any... I've, I'm, yeah, I've got a few more um, oh. questions. Sure. OK. Um, so how now I, I, I kind of figure out that the Earth is about 65 miles up and about two and a half miles wide. The what? Yeah. The Earth? Wait, wait what's no, the, no, the sun? The sun, 65 miles up. No, yeah. I have no way to prove that. I think the sun that we see is less than 10 miles away. Can't prove it. Here's the thing. Well, it's a reflection. So as you go up, it goes up to a point to where when you get at a certain height, uh, when you get, get at a certain height, the sun kind of is there. When we send a balloon up to 120,000 feet, it's kind of right there. I think 120,000 feet is like 20 miles or something. That looks okay. very close. It looks very level with the friggin' uh, this is as high as it gets. But think about this. The people way down there, they're not seeing the sun up here. They're seeing the sun way down lower, right? The sun manifests in an area relative to, to your own point of view. So th this is taken from a beach in Florida, right? Does that sun look as high as the sun that we just saw from 120,000 feet? No, it's right there within the clouds. This is impossible. It looks right? like a crystal ball. It looks like it's right there being held in the angelic clouds. Clouds are not what they tell us, by the way. Okay. It's right there. This is impossible. So saying it's 65 miles up, a, a normal heliocentrist would go, oh, that guy's completely retarded 65 miles up. It's 93 million miles away. I look at you and go, I think you're way off by maybe 60 miles. I think it's like, it's like five miles away. Well, uh, according to to a video, the dome at one certain point is seventy three miles high. Seventy three miles high. That, yeah, you saw the Go the Fast rocket. rocket went straight up. 
uninterrupted feed looking down and looking sideways. And right at around 73 miles, it went kerplunk into a thicker medium. What was that? I don't know. Was it water? I don't think so. I think it was like plasma or something in between air and water. And, uh, it, you know, they did some quick backpedaling. You know, there's a lot of controversy on this. It didn't hit anything. It stopped spinning because of the spin, anti-spin. The whole anti-spin yo-yo system that they came up with, it's a yo-yo answer. It came up after we started exposing this. Another point is you can see the moon, and that's impossible because the moon was over New Zealand. And this was over uh, the United States, over Arizona. So that is impossible to be able to see the moon unless the Earth was flat. There was another rocket that went up to 110 um, miles, I believe. Um, I, I, I saw a video of a rocket that went to like 300,000 feet. Don't believe it. I don't believe anything can go that high. I don't believe rockets go nearly that high. I think that go fast rocket is as high as they go. We had a whistleblower from NASA um, who quickly disappeared uh, saying that the dome, is, there is a firmament up there. They have the ability to go up there and explore it, but they're extri they're forbidden to do that. So what's above us? I don't know. And NASA's not going to give you an answer. I mean, you watch these rocket launches. You see the sideways rocket launch recently? Watch this. This rocket is a helium balloon with a little firework on the bottom, and something went wrong. Right? It just went sideways. Watch it again. And it's literally trying to go up. It has a little bit of assisted boost on it, but it's mostly helium. And then when they're looking for it in the distance, where is it? Where it should be shooting up. Oh, look. Here it is. It's just floating away. Okay. It, it All rocket launches are nonsense. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 it reminds me of a deranged firework. Yeah. And then... You know, and then they just show you this and then they cut away and no one says anything. It's just nonsense. Other times, um, there's no smoke at all coming out of the rocket, just smoke coming out of the ground. And then watch, there's no smoke. Look how clean this is. Look, there's no smoke. There's just, you know, where's all that thrust? It should be obliterating all of this. This is what I call the two pack rocket. It's a hologram. It's not real. This is 100% a hologram, we've actually caught NASA with their hologram projection cameras, their lenses on their um, lawn, but something went wrong with the hologram. Something went wrong and half the rocket disappears. Okay, well, but do, do, do you have any videos of, um, of rockets taking a swim, you know? going up and arcing into they the... All, uh, you know, I, should, I should add that. Um, there's, I should put a compilation. They all arc up and curve away. But, um, you know, the, the, it's, it's complete and total nonsense. You look up the, the launch of the space shuttle. This is all just a movie. Look. Oh, look how close they are. And then they show you this close picture here. This is a helium balloon. Just remember this. It's a Macy's Day Parade balloon. Right? Then they show you these people. They're all looking. And then they cut over. These people are so far away, they can't even see it. Okay? They're like 10 miles away or farther. Then they show you this. These guys are not there. They're in Alaska in a studio. And this thing is a giant helium-assisted balloon. Think about this. The thrust coming out of here has to lift 4 million pounds. Superheated thrust coming out at 20, 30,000 miles an hour. And look at the fence. Nothing. This fence, you ever see what a tornado would do to a fence like that? It would tie it in knots. 300 mile an hour room temperature winds. And this is getting superheated plasma and nothing happens. That's ridiculous. It would all be vaporized. Now look, this has a smoke trail, right? That's because they are launching something. This is a balloon. This is a light show sending out smoke. And if you watch, it leaves this long trail. Now, any one thing that leaves a trail like this, you watch it, all of a sudden the trail will stop. And, and you can't see the rocket anymore because it's gone. It's out of your visual range, right? This is, and look at it, it's curving over. And they tell us, well, it curves on its back because that's how it flies. No, it curves on its back because that external tank is a bigger balloon than the rest of it. And then this is very important. When, uh, if you just Google um, 
space shuttle launch, you'll find this video. It's the number one video they want you to find. When these external uh, solid rocket boosters let go, one, they should fly off, but they, they have these explosive bolts that go. So when you're watching it, you can hear it at the exact same time as you see it. Well, this thing is 30 miles downrange. If it was only 20 miles downrange, it would take 90 seconds for that sound to get back to the camera. Okay, this is a Hollywood production. People eat it up because they fell in love with space as a child. But, but don't, don't you think that rockets like that would hit the, the satellites? They're not going up that high. They're barely going higher than the clouds. They're just going out of sight. And then they're, they're, they're crashed in the Bermuda Triangle where there's no boats. They're yeah, film- isn't that about as high as the satellites go? No, the sat- they say the satellites will go much higher. Um, I think there are things that, you know, the, these rockets that we see are, are maybe going, I don't know, 30,000, 40,000 feet, not, maybe not even that high. They're not even going as high as airplanes, in my opinion, right? They're just going out of range. You can't see it. This thing is falling back to earth. It's going to burn up before it gets to those clouds. And it's being filmed the, by the people in the shuttle that are accelerating over 17,000 miles an hour into space. Somehow they're going up. This is falling down, but they can keep it in perfect focus. Give me a break. Okay. So how, how high do these satellites go? What satellites? The satellite. Well, the, you mean these satellites? The satellite balloons. Yeah, the satellite balloons. Yeah, maybe 100,000 feet, somewhere around there. NASA owns all of the helium companies in the world. All of the big helium companies. They're making it seem like there's a helium shortage because they don't want anyone starting up a you know, airship company because that would mean you have, you know, very inexpensive travel to anywhere you want to go. Right. Well, I think they create all this fear to get us all on the frequency of fear. Yes, 100%. That's what this <laughs> is all about. Because if we're on the frequency of fear, then we, then we understand what they're saying better. Yes, uh, and well, they, they can control us better. A hundred percent. They are controlling us, controlling our minds by having our minds in a prison, which is the globe. So it limits our thoughts. They have us living in fear. They steer our minds with the news, north, east, west, south, steering us. OK, and they keep us living in fear and in lack and believing a bunch of nonsense spinning out of control. Um, you can't really make proper life. I don't want to say decisions, but life manifestation requests when you're lost in fear, spinning out of control. Yeah. OK, on, on to on to the question of the moon. Yes. Yeah. Now, is, is the moon really made of cheese? Yes, a hundred percent. Yes. Blue cheese. Blue cheese. Ah, you've seen the blue moon. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so you 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 don't know exactly what it's made of. I don't know if it's made of anything or what shape it is. Right. You know, you can't uh, unless you can touch it and measure it. You don't know what shape it is, and. I don't care what shape it is. It looks kind of spherical to me, but that doesn't mean that my ground, you know, as I said before, the lights in my ceiling don't dictate the shape of my floor. The pool balls on the pool table don't dictate the shape of the table, nor does anything I see in the sky dictate the shape of the earth that I am standing on that is testably, measurably, scientifically, provably flat. Yeah, I, I watched a, a video by Pro Triple Seven, and he reckons that the the, the moon is a, an illusion <clears throat> hiding something behind it. Yes, yeah, so, so a hologram hiding something behind it. Very possible. Yeah. So. I believe that the moon and the sun are being projected. And that's why when there's a new moon, which means no light on the moon, the source of the moon, there's nothing to project. The sun, we always see the sun because it never has phases and it's always lit up. When there's a new moon, nobody has ever seen it for like 40 or 60 hours, something like that. Um, 
They've never filmed it from the space station, from a satellite, from infrared lenses, even during a complete total eclipse where the moon is blocking out the sun 100%. Well, we should be able to see the moon. It should be lit up. The earth shine should light up the moon brighter than the moonshine lights up the earth. And no one's ever seen a moon. No one's ever seen it during an eclipse. Now, you know, Crow will say, and many people will say, that the moon has nothing to do with the eclipse. I think the moon does have something to do with the eclipse, but it's not the moon that we see. It's the source moon, all right? Could be totally wrong. But we can. one thing we all can agree on is it's not a rock blocking out the sun. The idea that a, the sun 400 times bigger and 400 times farther than the moon makes them the same size and that they would eclipse each other every year and those eclipses repeat every 18 years, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely nonsensical so 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 what do you think about the 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 black sun um idea yeah i love it i mean i put a video on the app called uh there was a freemason that uh basically drew some illustrations showing how the black sun under the earth is uh projecting it also um e warrenon if you've seen uh what on earth happened and uh the the Lost History of Flat Earth, those videos are mind-blowing. Uh, it's stuff that's above what I'm able to fully understand, but it makes a hell of a lot of sense. And for those of you no. listening, on my app, on the web page, there's a link to the, the Iwarnon stuff. Um, I highly recommend you watch it. When somebody sent me the Lost History of Flat Earth, I'm like, five hours. I'm not watching that. You know, I don't, you know, I don't have time for that. But then one night at 11 p.m., I was doing some stuff. And I was like, I, I need something to listen to while I'm doing this. I was like, let me put on this thing that keep, people keep sending me. 4 a.m. later, I'm still awake, and my mind is absolutely blown. I've watched it three times since then. Um, but anybody that takes the time to watch that, your life would change. You, you become a different person by the time that's over. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. The whole the whole idea is quite amazing, really. Did, have you watched the Iwarnon stuff yet? Well, let let me put it like this. In my last uh, the spiritual journey video, uh, which is the fifth week of the third year. Pinned in the comments, I've pinned all 13 videos. Yeah, there, oh, there, there's a link for all 13 So that's videos. a yes. Yes. And not only that, not only that, I've pinned um, a Telegram group, a chat group, where you can go and talk about it as well. Very good. Yeah. So, so, so anyone who wants that information, go to my video and, and you'll get it. It's also accessible in the app. All right, um, we're we're at the end of the hour here, so. Well, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking, crow. Yep. Yeah. You know. Uh, this this is uh, the end, isn't it? Very good. <laughs> you can find me at flatearthdave.com. All my stuff is there, and my YouTube is D I T R H. Initials for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. D I T R H. Don't forget the okay. app. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll put the I'll put your uh, a link for your site under the um, under the video. Great, and uh, a link for Olympic Fever as well. Nice. Send me a link when it's up. I'll share it on the app. All right. Okay. Yes. Thanks. See you later. Thank Thank, thank you very much, David. All right. A pleasure talking to you. Bye, David. Yes. Bye, David. <laughs>